aunque sea Good morning, sir. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Nick. Good morning. Uh, good morning, everyone. We are going to start the event within a few minutes. Uh, sorry for the technical delay happened. I think I'm audible, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank yeah, you. it's audible. Yes, ma'am. Audible. Oh, thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm going to start with the introduction. Uh, when the will to live is at a pause, call it a pause and not a stop. The life you are looking at is only one window of your life. Look at your life from another window, one which has a garden of hopes blooming under the golden rays of sunshine. A very good morning to one and all, respected teachers, our honorable guest speakers, and our talented students. The theme of today's program, as you all might already be aware of, is hope. Hope is a ray of light that comes from the simplest of things. Hope is that rope one holds onto when one is waiting for that one last push to throw them off the cliff. Hope is that one new leaf, that one blooming flower on a plant, which seemed to have died. We have all gone through a dark phase, now a dark memory, which seemed endless, but now has passed. We have our enlightening speakers with us today, whom we can't wait to receive inspiring words from, and our fellow students who are going to display their beautiful pieces of art in the form of paintings, essays, posters, and much more. Thank you. I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright. 
call the bear my light to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I I will go, Lord, if you leave me, I will hold your people in my heart. I, the Lord, open them flame. I will tend the poor and lame. I will send the feast for them. My hand will save. Finest bread I will provide till their hearts be satisfied. I will give my life to them. Who shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it a I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. I will hold your people in my heart. Thank you so much, Maha. Thank you, Maria. You have a beautiful voice. Good morning, everyone. Um, I am Manal from BA Psychology, second year. As you all know, we have gathered here for the sec. Uh, as you all know, we have gathered here for the suicide prevention program. This event has been organized by uh, Miss by the head of the department, Miss Mo Mohana Nandigam, a psychologist who has done PhD, and the faculty of the department, Miss Zainab Salim, a clinical psychologist. To anyone out there who is hurt. To anyone out there who's hurt, it's not a sign of weakness to ask for help. It's a sign of strength. What is suicide? Suicide means ending your own life. It is a way for people to escape pain and sufferings. Over 139,000 people uh, deaths due to suicide were recorded in the year 90% of suicides are caused by a treatable or a temporary mental illness. Four out of five people will suffer from a mental illness in their lifetime. Every 40 seconds, someone dies of suicide. Suicide is not caused by weakness or lack of courage, but rather by having had to be strong for too long. Suicide is whispered word inappropriate for a polite company. Family and friends pretend they do not hear the words dread even when it is uttered. For suicide is a taboo subject that stigmatizes not only the um, victim, but the survivors as well. When you feel like giving up, just remember the reason why you held on for so long. Remember the word hope. H, help break the stigma. O, open up. P, promise yourself. And E, end the sadness. Pain is a part of growing. Everything in life is temporary. Worrying and complaining changes nothing. Your scars and your pains are, your sim are symbols of your strength. If you've ever been suicidal or know someone that has, 
you will know that without help, escaping the feeling of wanting to Hatija please off your mic if you've ever been suicidal or know someone that has you will know that without help escaping that feeling of wanting to end it all is difficult suicide doesn't end the chances of life getting worse it eliminates the possibility of life getting any better. When the mind is so dark, it can be hard to see any possibility for uh, future happiness, but it can and often does get better. Never, never give up. By never giving up, you are quietly building an inner strength and resilience that will fortify you. When you feel like giving up, just remember the reason why you held on for so long. Depression is not something that goes away within an hour or the next day. It is a prolonged mental illness. Each day that we are quiet, a life is being taken away by their own hands. We must make ourselves aware of the signs. Often we see the signs, but we ignore them. Suicide is a dominant cause of death among teenagers and young adults. The rate of suicides and suicide attempts increases from time to time. You know, when bratty behavior is being considered normal for a teenager, it becomes increasingly important for us to maintain awareness and differentiate between normal moodiness and a depressive behavior. If someone jokes about killing themselves, take it seriously. If someone jokes about starving themselves, take it seriously. If someone jokes about wanting to die, take it seriously. If someone jokes about harming themselves or harming others, take it seriously. If someone jokes about being abused, take it seriously. And if someone jokes about planning suicide, take it seriously. Because jokes are not always joking. Sometimes they're serious cries for help. Suicide is an epidemic that has taken the lives of countless people of all age groups. This frightening crisis has led to the creation of several suicide prevention programs. Suicide is not chosen. It happens when the pain exceeds the resources that are required for coping up with the pain. Ending a life is a big step in the wrong direction. Suicides happen every day and every day a family's life is changed. Something needs to be done to raise awareness. Suicide is a much bigger problem than the society will admit. The causes, the methods and the prevention needs to be discussed more openly. And this is why we are here to spread awareness and try our best to reduce the number of suicides. Um, I would like to introduce the head of the department, Ms. Mohan Anandigam. She, is, uh, she has done master's in psychology, PhD, PhD diploma in family and health counseling, diploma in life skills. She is a career counselor, dream analyst, and a psychologist. She has an experience of more than 11 years in building confidence in individuals through training and teaching, group counseling, stress management, and dream analysis and REBT. Welcome, Mohana ma'am. Good morning, everyone. I'm Mohana Nandigam. I completed my PhD from Geetam University. And uh, right now I'm working as a HOD from St. Anne's College, uh, from uh, women's, St. Anne's Women's College. Actually, St. Anne's Women's College established in 1981 by the Sister Society of St. Anne. Okay, uh, the founder was Srimati Tadipatri Gangamma, a visionary who dedicated her life to enlighten and educate poor young girls. See, that is the purpose of the sentence. So now we are here. Sentence College for Women is an autonomous institution accredited in BA plus grade by NAC. It had begun only with two programs, two rooms, and one, one or three students. That's the way we started, uh, Sundance got started. It currently has over 3,000 students. It aims to further the cause of women education and thus their improvement. The Department of Psychology had begun in 10 years back with Lata Subramanyam ma'am. Uh, she was the first HOD. And uh, actually, fortunately, I worked with her at Ambedkar University for two, three years as a guest faculty. Uh, the day onwards, I got passionate to work with Sentence College. Uh, actually, I'm very glad uh, uh, by giving this opportunity from Sentence Principal, ma'am, and even uh, the recruiter, Sujini, ma'am, the 
earlier hod and i am glad and blessed to be part of an excellent institution i am proud for that and grateful to be the head of the prosperous department with experience lecturers like mrs jainab salim and very well talented cooperative students i proudly call my team as a student team warriors why is they still work late night and uh, today it's happening because of them see why we are here today because world suicide prevention day uh, so it's an awareness day observed on 10th september every year in order to provide worldwide commitment and action to prevent suicides with various activities around the world since 2003 and that's the reason we started this activity today uh, creating hope through action is a reminder uh, that there is an alternative to suicide and aims to inspire confidence and light in all of us that our actions no matter how big or small may provide hope to those who are struggling preventing suicide is an often possible and you are a key player in its prevention action speaks a lot when compared to words that uh, that's the only one thing i believe in me and i believe in other people i even see from others also see through action you can make a difference someone in the dark moments as a member of a society as a child as a parent as a friend as a college as a neighbor mm, as a uh, course caller whatever okay we can all play a role in supporting those experiencing a suicidal crisis or those bereaved by suicide we can help give some hope by showing that you care all of us can play a role no matter how small how big see here our concept is still life had a way of adding day by day with people uh, with love hope and compassion okay see here uh, that's the reason we are uh, we are we are meeting here i am very glad and very happy to invite everyone see now this stage will be taken care by my students i am glad to invite elena and dr melkur and dr srikant yeah thank you everyone thank you so much mohan ma'am uh, now i would like to welcome our guest speaker uh, miss elena ivanchikova she is a clinical psychologist analytical psychologist and a jungian psychotherapist she has done masters in philology she is a specialist in clinical psychology she is a member of ecpp a member of uraapp and ajc miss elena has 13 years of clinical practice She is a lecturer in Psychoanalytic Institute for Eastern Europe, Russian Academy of Science, International Center of Analytical Psychology. Ms. Elena is an expert in state and uh, national media of Russia. She is a delegate of international congresses and conferences for analytical psychology. She is a speaker in conferences for analytical psychology in Moscow, Saint Petersburg, Ekaterinburg, and Samara. Ms. Elena will be explaining on suicides. uh jungian approach and perspective welcome ma'am mm -hmm. uh thank you so much um could you please upload as the presentation of oh. my report yes ma'am okay uh so hello to everyone so nice to see you all and uh, let me express my big gratitude to ms uh, mohan nandigam who has kindly invited me to read this small lecture I'll read you a lecture on Jungian view at the theory of suicides, and if you have questions, you can write me to the chat. I have deep connections with India, and uh, usually I visit it every year. And uh, it's so sad that uh, because of this uh, pandemic situation in the world, uh, this year and um, the last year I was unable to visit it. Uh, but I hope uh, some better time <laughs> will come soon. So let's start. Uh, okay, uh, suicides, Jungian approach and perspective. Uh, please, next slide. Uh, now, suicide problem is one of the most alarming problems in modern psychotherapy. It can result from a catastrophic emotional breakdown or from a trauma so powerful that it cannot be integrated and simply breaks apart a person's psyche so that death a sleep and escape becomes an overwhelming temptation so we should investigate suicide issue 
not only through the lens of life, society and medicine, but also through the lens of relation of a person to death. But why do people commit suicides? Sometimes the claims of the soul that go against our physical well-being led us to suicide. A person in severe emotional trauma or distress begins to cut herself on her arms or on other parts of her body or expresses the wish to jump from the skyscraper. In Jungian paradigm, we can say that trauma overwhelms the ego and damages the connection between ego and self. Ego self exists. Chuck Bender writes, it's, F, uh, it's as if the traumatic injuries are 220 plus voltage and the ego is only wired for 110 volts. The ego symbolically gets shocked or knocked out of the board. During this unconscious to ego phase of the episode, sometimes something of the traumatic experience comes in, lodges in the body, in total psyche, now separated and split from ego consciousness. This split and isolated traumatic experience creates our so-called inner killer, inner killer, a shadow part of our psyche. In suicides, this inner killer tries to use the body as an instrument for concrete aims. This inner killer attacks psyche and causes suicidal thoughts and fantasies. And when people feel grief and despair or suffer from suicidal thoughts, they may feel like they are dying inside. In order to make this clear, we can say that only part of them, a false self, needs to die. When the false self is permitted to die symbolically, ego side, a kind of mourning process is set in motion. When the cycle comes to an end, the person is transformed and experiences new life, a rebirth of purpose and meaning. But why sometimes even those who have no traumatic experience encounter with suicidal fantasies and thoughts? In the study Le Suicide, Emil Brugheim demonstrates that sometimes neither psychopathic factors, nor heredity, nor climate, nor poverty, nor unhappy love, nor another personal factors offer a sufficient explanation of suicide. Rather, he proposes that suicide is caused by some power which is over and above the individual, a super individual power. It, and it can be explained through the lens of suicide fantasies as a seek of the soul for renewal and widening of consciousness. James Hillman argues that the suicide impulse is instinctively a transformation drives. As he writes, suicide is an attempt to move from one real to another by force through death. The next slide, please. As it said in Bhagavad Gita, as a person sheds worn out garments and wears new one, uh, likewise, at the time of death, the soul casts off its worn out body and enters the new one. And here we observe this phrase, not from religious, but from metaphorical and symbolical position. In this way, a fantasy of suicide can be about search for reunion, ego self access, and reintegration. Next slide, please. And the most clarifying example are dreams about suicide and death. When we sleep, and this is a dream uh, where we die, or our beloved people die. Are <clears throat> these good dreams or bad dreams? And why does 
our psyche organizes such dreams to us. I think that these dreams contain an enormous potential for regeneration and transformation of psyche because the old part of psyche should die to let the newborn part of psyche to live. And let's immerse into the myth of Odin, Europe myth of Odin. Odin uh, is a widely revered god in Germanic mythology. He is a god of war, but he also may be best understood as a god of wisdom and inspiration. Odin tells the tale of how he sacrificed himself to himself on the world tree Yggdrasil. For nine days and nights, he hanged himself on the tree and pierced himself by a spear. At the end of this, learning something from this deadly experience that he could not learn in life, he was able to claim the knowledge of the runes, the Norse writing system, which is associated with magic and return to the lands of living. So it's a resurrection story. And once he had healed, he was able to comprehend the secrets he had learned and began to share them that the world might be better for his sacrifice. These are verses. I know that I hung on a windy tree, nine long nights, wounded by a spear, dedicated to Odin, myself to myself, on the tree of which no man knows from where its roots run. No bread did they give me, nor a drink from a horn. Though words I peered, I took up the runes, screaming I took them. Then I fell back from there. So what does it mean? Our shadow complex, our inner killer, can be the ambassador of self, which wants to get treasures, psychological treasures through the sacrifice. The shadow can conceal gold. The next slide, please. Thank you. Not by the chance in Greek mythology, Thanatos, god of death, and Hypnos, god of dream, are twins. Uh, because uh, dreams of death are usually about not only death, but about different things. For example, ability to relax or transformation. Uh, and considering the story as a transformational sacrifice, a sacrifice meaning to make sacred, we can see a similar motif throughout the history of Christianity, for example. The next slide, please. Yes. Jesus Christ consciously went into death and was crucified to be resurrected, to come through transformation. If we look at his story in a symbolical way, we see that uh, by this, he could overcome the split between divine and human, between sky and earth. The next slide, please. So suicide is a claim of the soul. The suicide can and does make claims that go against our physical well-being. And it has its reasons because the soul can make claims that go against our body and against our physical well-being. And suicide is often that, the soul making its own claims. And these claims can be rather complex. Due to that, we should look at suicide as to inquire need and attempt of the soul to speak to us. In Jungian analysis issue, suicides can be investigated through teleological position of position of future, which is not mostly about reasons about the past, but about seeks and goals of the soul. 
about needs of a person who tries to commit the suicide, a fantasy is about suicide. Because everyone of suicide feels pain and suffer, but the types of pain and suffer can be different. And the danger here lies not in the fantasies, but in its literalism and uh, acting out these fantasies. As Carl Gustav Jung is saying, the goal of life is the realization of self, of our higher ego. And if you kill yourself, you abolish this will of the self that guides you through life to the eventual goal. And the root metaphor of suicide is the claim of soul. The question is not only in that because of what the suicider does it, but also for what he or she does it. If we figure it out, we can go to the spiritual dimension of suicide. And in a clinical way, we can say that the task of therapist or psychologist or analyst is to give recognition to the states of the soul that the person concerned is mm -hmm. undergoing so that they may become realized in the personality and believed consciously in a symbolical way. So he is there to confirm what is going on and analyze what is going on. So we should stay in touch with knowledge about the experience of death. And the round of fantasies of death met in the soul. Its meanings, images, emotions, and its input in psychic life. The various paths into and out of suicide let us suggest the archetypical nature of suicide and see it as a threshold where someone prefers to live life and another one prefers to realize his or her spiritual drive. These are very basic and profound fantasies of the human soul. And let's look into common fantasies of suicide and try to classify it and categorize it. Let's look what meaning do individuals attach to different methods of suicide. The first one, jump from a great height. So if someone has fantasies about uh, jump from the height, uh, maybe uh, uh, the logical question here would be, uh, what would be here your feelings if you imagine it? And the most common question here, and the, the most uh, common association here is to get rid of control. Because when someone has fantasies about jump from the height, the flight is uh, often accompanied by feelings of freedom and uh, letting himself go. Another one, hanging. When someone fantasies about a noose around the neck, it often describes the impossibility to breathe deeply, to breathe at the top of the lungs. And those who was asked for association compared, um, uh, they have associated with, uh, it with asphyxia. Uh, and um, uh, all of them hoped it would be a very easy and fast way of uh, ending life. But the unconscious need here is to let the fresh air to come in after a spasm. The next one, to cut veins. Cutting veins and letting the blood go, bleeding to death, uh, sometimes associates with the blood renewal because blood nourishes body tissues. And it's known that bloodletting of phlebotomy stimulates the regeneration in case of different diseases. So in that way, uh, what about this fantasy? we can talk about so-called mental anemia. And if the key problem here is the weakening of vital force, uh, the goal of the soul here 
is about having access to vitality, unfolding the vitality. The next one, poisoning and overdose of drugs. And fantasies of this kind represent the need for falling asleep, so-called eternal sleep. And these fantasies are associated with the state of a baby who calmly uh, and peacefully sleeps in the bed. When mother's nourishing milk is absent, the poison comes to be the substitute of the milk. And the need here is to be contained and fed. And what is important here, we talk about fantasies, uh, not reality. Because when someone fantasies of eating drugs and being asleep, he or she uh, usually does not fantasy of vomiting or of throwing something up. He or she dreams and relaxation. Uh, and I want to you uh, and I want to ask you a question. Um, what types uh, of suicide are most widespread in India? Mm. Poisoning or hang? uh, hanging? Poisoning. Yeah. Hanging. Uh -huh. Hanging. Oh. Yes. Yes. Uh, hang. Okay. 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 So in Russia, it's very common because um, uh, Russia is uh, one of the three suicide leaders in the world and uh, a leader in male suicides too. So we usually know, know a lot about it. And what I can say about statistics. Uh, now, uh, 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 most of all suicides are committed by people uh, of age uh, from, 40, from 40 years old. Because suicides among teenagers and young people are also widespread. But um, all the, the age group, the higher the death rate. And uh, so uh, in this phase of life, after 40, a person meets with a middle age crisis. So the task here is to estimate convictions and principles of this period and facilitate the transformation of the person. Uh, because as I have said earlier, sometimes uh, the wish of someone is not to kill himself. His need is to kill the false self, his old personality, to come through new renewal and transformation. And I'll give you a clinical example to make it clear. I'll call this patient George. Uh, he was very young, 19 years, years old, uh, when he entered my office. The next slide, please. Uh, his father was a carpenter, uh, loving but impulsive, but ambivalent and unpredictable in reactions. And his mother was a depressive, isolated, alcoholic housewife. And a year ago, his elder sister, elder than him, six years old, uh, jumped from the roof of the skyscraper because of the depression. And a week before coming to my office, he also has jumped from the bridge to the water. And you know, it was not a San Francisco Golden Bridge. It was St. Petersburg Bridge. And uh, St. Petersburg Bridge was only, uh, you know, eight, about eight meters height. When you are jumping uh, to the water uh, from eight meters height, you have all the chances to stay alive. But what was hidden under this suicide attempt? I was puzzled and surprised. At first, I had thought that he uh, has identified with his sister. He jumped from the bridge because it was an identification attempt. He was not able to connect with his sister in life, so he wanted to connect with her in death. I asked him, why have you done it? Why have you jumped from the bridge? And he answered, oh, I don't know. I had, I had just came across the bridge and the water was so magnetic. I have asked what happened later. And the first thing he felt after rescue, uh, after coming uh, of rescue team and emergency ambulance car, kind holding hands of uh, the emergency worker 
who was holding him and was wrapping him into the isothermic blanket. This patient has jumped from the bridge to be catched, to be held, and to be reborn coming from the water. He was symbolically baptized like Jesus Christ and his need and the goal of his soul was to jump, to be catched by careful loving hands, to jump from loneliness and abandonment to loving hands and connections to other people. The next slide, please. So, uh, conclusion and brief summary. Traumatic experience creates split in the psyche between ego and self, and so-called inner, inner, inner killer. This inner killer pursues to kill the old parts of psyche, so-called false self, to commit self-sacrifice or egocide. And the root metaphor of suicide is a claim of the soul and seek of transformation. And we should investigate the goals of soul, of suicide finger, to embody this claim, not literally, not by acting out, but symbolically to get wholeness, to jump, to be catched, as I, uh, I have told in the example. The next slide, please. As Jung is saying, we live in order to attain the greatest possible amount of spiritual development and self-awareness, as long as life is possible, even if only in a medial degree. We should hang on it in order to scoop it up for the purpose of conscious development to interrupt life before its time is to bring it a standstill uh, an experiment which we have not set up. We have found ourselves in the midst of, its of it and we should carry it through at the end. And I'll read you a small piece of poetry. Razors pain you, rivers are damp. Acids stain you, and drugs cause cramp. Guns aren't lawful, nooses give, gas smells awful. You might as well live. Uh, thank you so much for your attention. And you, if you have questions, uh, please write it to the chat. Thank you so much, ma'am, for taking time for us, taking out time for us, and for the information that you have given us. Uh, now, I would like to show you some of the amazing works of our talented students. Um, I would now invite Masira from PLP Thordio to present a poem. Hello, everyone. This is the Masira from PLP Thordio. So uh, I'm currently pursuing psychology as my major. And um, today I've presented uh, two poems uh, and I'll be reading one of them to you right now. Okay. So the poems, the poem's title is First Shower of the Season for You. How beautiful is the rain, for the moment just forget the pain. Hold my hand, let's see the rainbow, and not just enjoy it from the window. Let the droplets stand on your lips, soak in the water by losing your grip. The darkness is, is not something you uh, preserve. It's the new morning that you deserve. It's the first shower of the season. For you to live and enjoy it is a good inner reason. Let this be the end to your past. There are many more mon monsoons to come. Don't just make this the last. Enjoy the wind and the sky. Believe in yourself and this time you will make it high. Thank you. 
Namaste, Masira. It was a wonderful poem. The way you have written it with all those emotions, that was great. Thank you so much. I would now invite Sava Fain from PEP third year to present an essay. Good morning, everyone. I'm Sabha Afrin, and I'm pursuing psychology as a major in St. Anne's College. And it's my pleasure to introduce myself. I'm honored to be a part of such inspiring event where we raise awareness on this stigmatized and often taboo topic, suicide. As we all know, the main goal of the Suicide Prevention Awareness Month is to spread hope and the vital information to the people who are silently suffering and are affected by suicide. This also encouraged me to raise my voice for the better mental health care. Now I'm gonna start reading my essay. So suicide is defined as death by an act of self-infliction as an effort to end one's own life. According to the World Health Organization, more than seven lakh people die due to suicide every year. Suicide is the fourth leading cause of death among 15 to 19 year olds. 77% of global suicides occur in low and middle income countries. Ingestion of pesticide, hanging and firearms are among the most common methods of suicide globally. Over the years, the issue of suicide has been slowly increasing. Some people who consider suicide, however, they never make a serious attempt at it. For every attempted suicide, they said to be more than one person whose thought of suicide has never translated into an actual attempt. Suicide prevention largely targets teenagers in hope to lower the number of suicides a year. While depression, anxiety, stress are the leading causes of suicide. What's the need for suicide prevention? It is my belief that if more and more people are educated about suicide, the warning signs would be my plan. Yeah, go ahead. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, you can. Yeah, go ahead. Many suicide attempts are not reported each year, especially in India. Also, perhaps the number of deaths by suicide are not reported as actual suicides, but they are reported as accidental suicides. Suicide is a... and commits as well. Suicide is preventable. And one way to prevent suicide is to educate individuals on risk factors. One major component of suicide prevention is being able to recognize the warning signs. Most research suggests that the majority of people who attempt suicide usually give out some sort of a warning sign. These warning signs consist of personal behaviors, verbal and non-verbal communications also may or may not include the following. You will see a change in personality. They'll um, feel like they'll be withdrawn. They'll be sad most of the time, anxious and tired. There will be a change in behavior, like, like lack of concentration in school, work, daily tasks, change in their sleep pattern, change in their eating patterns, loss of interest in friends, daily course, and previously enjoyed activities. The more people get access to suicidal prevention education, the more we can decrease suicide. I feel that the more any type of suicide prevention that educates not only professionals, but also society about suicide 
and the warning signs of suicide are successful. More people are aware, then more attempted suicide. Sabha, you're on mute. How to prevent suicidal thoughts? There's a famous saying by Stephen Hawking, while there is life, there is hope. Yes, there is hope. It may not always be easy to prevent suicidal thoughts. There will be days when you feel like life just isn't worth living. The most important thing is that you don't, shouldn't feel guilty or ashamed for having these thoughts and know that you are not alone. Plenty of people have had suicidal thoughts and were then able to prevent having them and went on to live meaningful lives. Try to change your thoughts. Know that you can get through this. You may feel like you have nothing to live for and that everything can only get worse. But the important thing is to remember that things will get better. Sure, your life will not be amazing overnight, but if you are aware that things can get better for you, it will help. Try to ask for help immediately. There are many people out there who deal with people like us every day of their lives. They are there to help us, not to make us feel even more miserable. If you tell your friends how you're feeling and your family members how you're feeling, that they are guaranteed to help you out. That is, if you let them, if you're not, you are not alone, remember that. If the thoughts still linger in your mind, think of all the people who love and care about you. Don't be ashamed of your thoughts. It's totally fine having everyone have their ups and downs. Think of all the things you have yet to do. Yes, this may sound corny, but taking the time to write down and consider all of the things that you haven't done yet, whether it's to fall in love or to travel to a foreign country, sounds good, right? This can give you hope and more of a reason to live. Think of all the positive things around you for which you are grateful for. I'm sure after that, you can overcome these thoughts easily. Just because you're having these thoughts, it doesn't make you a bad person. Just remember, keep yourself calm and believe that everything will get better in time. Nobody said coping with these thoughts would be easy. But if you can get help from other people and accept their help, then things will turn out for the best. Have patience and believe in yourself. If you have been rejected by a person or have been rejected for a job or if you have got bad marks in your exams, had a fight with your loved one or had a breakup, remember that you'll get another job. You can sort things out with your loved one sooner or later. You will find another human being who will uplift you and understand you who will respect you as a person and you can get good marks the other time. See, there is always hope, but don't burden yourself with your thoughts. Try to speak up and also check on the people around you. Provide help to one another. As a society, we can prevent suicide. And remember, you are not alone. Thank you. Well done, Sabafreen. That was a very informative essay. By adding the preventions, you made it more fabulous. Um, one second. Okay. Please welcome Kirti of PEP for her beautiful performance. She is here to steal your heart. So hold your breath and welcome her with a big round of applause.
ಬಂದಮೇಲೆ ಪಾಡಿ ಪೋಯನು ಕಾದ Kiki, that was wonderful. You have great charisma. You put your heart and soul into the dance. That was amazing. Uh, now let me invite Zoha Fatima of PLP Second Year to present a poem. Okay, uh, this is Masira again. Actually, Zoha couldn't join us uh, to read her work. So let me present her poem on her behalf. Zoha is from uh, PLP Second Year. <laughs> So the poem's title is It's Okay I Know I Am Different. The chaos inside my mind questions my existence and my worth. I feel lost finding answers to those. I feel burdened suffering al- all alone. I feel troubled living as an unknown. I know there's light ahead in the end. Giving up so soon isn't worth. But there's seeds of of confidence inside i'm waiting for them to sow and grow bright i know it's worth to start again from the beginning rather than ending in the middle i know it's okay to be different it's just i want to be a self inspiration i know the world will criticize me still i want to try to live again and cherish myself become what i want and prove my worth thank you and that was a poem written by zoha thank you zoha zoha i have no words to describe how beautiful this poem is well done um i would now welcome our guest speaker dr srikant bandri who who has done mbbs from usmania and md psychiatry from institute of mental health eragadda Dr Srikanth is working as a civil assistant surgeon at Sangareddy District Hospital and under national mental health program for Sangareddy District. He is a consultant psychiatrist at Asha Hospital Banjara Hills. Welcome sir. Is it is it uh, audible now? Hello. Yes sir. Yes sir. Is yes, it sir. audible? yeah 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 uh, hello and uh, good morning good morning one and all and the program has been a uh, fantastic one till now and let me let me add to that uh, like a few a uh, few of the points for that and also uh, let me let me thank uh, mohana for this uh, opportunity for me so can you can you uh, change the slide for me yeah uh, in this uh, like a short short like discussion we'll like discuss on the basic basic terminology and the magnitude of problem in india and the current situation and the uh, scenario of uh, this thing in uh, india and like how to recognize and help for those who are expressing this with adult thoughts next screen please next slide huh. yeah see when we come to the exact exact terminology actually there are a, like a number of definitions for that but the uh, like the short and best one would be uh, suicide is a deliberately done act with a fatal outcome and at the same time para suicide is something the uh, which is a suicidal attempt but the uh, intent to end the life is not that much okay so in this para suicide attempt we can think of something like as a deliberate self harm with the persons will keep on like uh, cutting their uh, like wrists and all those things or like jumping from a uh, uh, what we say from a smaller heights and all those things so para suicides we see in most of the personality disorder issues and where the suicides are uh, uh, we, uh, we see in a little more severe uh, kind of psychiatric cases next next slide please yeah when we come to the data uh, Uh, this is from the from actually the who data so suicides have been the third leading cause of death in young age group worldwide young age group is the most like productive working age group and uh, approximately 8 lakh lives are lost in a year this is according to the 2019 data and uh, when it comes to the indian scenario see the male to female ratio is around 7 is to 3 uh which is uh, which is in uh, coherence with most of the world right kuchon chalu koya 
and this problem can affect uh, people of all age and people of any <laughs> kind of profession. Swapna Priya, please mute yourself. Uh, so I'm really sorry for the disturbance. Girls, please please mute yourself, everyone. Except Dr. Srikant. Please mute yourself. Uh, yes, sir, you can continue now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, see, out of out of these things, we can identify a few of the people who are uh, at risk for like committing suicide in the future. So the risk factors could be a, a significant family history of any kind of suicidal attempt in the past, or even a significant family history of any uh, kind of psychiatric disorder. And the other group include alcohol or, or for that matter, any any kind of drug which have been like misused. And being being jobless or from a lower socioeconomic status, and uh, people who are unmarried or people who are married and having uh, and are without uh, children, or people uh, living in a nuclear family or for uh, like for those who have uh, very 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 little emotional support, and also persons suffering from some kind of uh, personality disorders are at a higher risk. And like similarly, we have like uh, some of the qualities that are protective against this suicidal attempt and like these may uh, like these may include uh, persons uh, who are like married and persons who have children and persons who are on a job and uh, uh, people with a very uh, healthy healthy uh, lifestyle so these are the factors that are, that act as a protective uh, factors from preventing the uh, suicidal attempts next slide please Yeah. You see, if we come to the specific specific reasons about this suicidal attempt, and these can range from a uh, very very minor reason to the extreme of the reason. And uh, if we can see that uh, the like most prevalent in the young age group could be the adjustment reactions. Uh, nowadays, we are even uh, like watching it on the media and the social media that the like the silliest of reasons could. Uh, end up in a suicidal attempt, like uh, not like the parents not permitting their children to play in, uh, with the uh, uh, smartphone, or or some some like trivial issues are like triggering these suicidal attempts. So the other issues, like the uh, main reasons, could be social issues or the financial issues, which are most uh, prevalent in countries like India, uh, and uh, wherein the financial causes are the most prevalent uh, this thing for the farmer suicides mainly and also the financial uh, losses after starting some kind of business and other reasons could be the physical reasons also uh, physical reasons could be like suffering from some kind of permanent uh, physical physical disorders or even recently diagnosed with some 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 uh, like diseases like hiv aids or some other disorders also. And even we have also uh, seen recently persons with COVID, uh, like because of the fear of uh, fear of death, few of the uh, uh, patients with COVID have also committed suicide. And coming to the psychological issues, so the first and foremost would, uh, would be the depression and other adjustment disorders, anxiety and schizophrenia and bipolar disorders, uh, wherein the persons might actually hear, hear those voices telling them to uh, commit suicide. And the other thing could be the drugs. And uh, most of the suicidal attempts are being carried out under the influence of the drug. So here the drug may not actually play uh, the actual role in uh, like uh, uh, pushing the person for the suicide. For example, if a person is under, under like depression, he may consume a like lot of alcohol and then uh, uh, go for a suicidal attempt. Okay, so in this way, drugs will directly or indirectly lead to the suicidal attempt. Next slide, please. And there are a lot of myths and uh, 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 like surrounding the suicidal attempts, and which will like uh, uh, delay the process of uh, seeking the professional help. Okay, so these could be. 
so the myth surrounding this could be a person who attempts suicide is an attention seeker or a weak minded person and the suicide could not be treated is one more myth and there are no other professionals who could like uh, help for a person with uh, this thing uh, suicidal thoughts and one more thing is the one who wants to commit suicide will never express it so these are the myths surrounding the suicidal attempt uh, next slide please so the uh, facts under the uh, like the myths could be uh, one thing that i want to make uh a, like a highlight of this is uh, suicide is an uh, end result of an underlying psychological trauma for a longer time generally and it is entirely treatable and it is not a sign of weakness in fact it is a uh, like sign of a person's psychological strength okay so the uh, the uh, what we say the, the treatable part that is the uh, thing that we need to highlight in the awareness programs so this is for a uh, what we say for the for the general public also so what the uh, like the perception of most of the people is that a person who is like destined to like uh, commit suicide he is going to commit suicide anyway like uh, there are no other preventive measures for that so this thing we need to take into the general public uh, next slide please and one more thing how to deal with the suicidal thoughts or like what are the preventive aspects uh, like uh, this is for actually the uh, general public uh, maintaining a healthy healthy uh, lifestyle both physically and psychologically by like practices like yoga and other 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 physical exercises and the kind of positive thinking during the stressful times and maintaining good uh, kind of relationships with the family members and with friends and seeking for help when required uh, like uh, like uh, these are the things that will act as a preventive measure so we need to take these things into into the general public more than the other things okay uh, next slide please <laughs> and uh, how can we recognize uh, about a person uh, who like might might attempt a suicide uh, this thing in the uh, uh, near future uh, we can we can Uh, actually recognize person who are uh, about to commit suicide from their uh, language that they use it is uh, like most of in the what we say pessimistic kind of thing and they often use terms like life is useless life is worthless and there is no point in living and these need to be taken as the warning signs and then we have to act accordingly and the behavioral changes as the other student has also pointed out uh and the behavioral changes could be uh being like withdrawn dull or consuming excess alcohol or any kind of drug for that matter and the behavioral changes could be taking new kind of uh, life insurances or like writing some kind of will or like uh, people also often search about the ways of painless death in the like uh, google and all those other uh, search engines so what to do when someone comes to you and expresses uh next slide please see this is also for the for the like the uh, like general public to understand about this uh, what if someone near to you uh, like comes to you and express that they have been going through some kind of psychological trauma and that they want to uh, want to end their life so the uh, we'll see it under do and don'ts uh, this thing uh, do listen to them listen listen and listen to their problem completely okay and then after listening to the problem discuss openly and offer help from your side and show empathy and not sympathy this is the most important thing and if required and if the other all other measures fail seek a professional help and the professional could be a psychiatrist or psychologist working uh, in this field and what you should not do is and uh, like uh, like this happens with with uh, most of us do not judge or like be little the problem for example when your friend comes and tell to you that uh, he has been suffering from like sleeplessness or some kind of depression and or maybe because of the business losses never judge or like be little the problem never say that the, the one or two lakhs is not going to be a problem or Uh, are you like going to die because of such a such a like a silly thing so never never belittle their problem always try to understand it from their shoe 
and uh, never argue with them about what is right or uh, like what is wrong only uh, people in their situation can can like uh, understand their uh, psychological problem and never offer any kind of unprofessional help for example don't offer like alcohol or some other drugs to like temporarily uh, uh, like uh, calm them down this can actually have uh, negative effects in a uh, like a longer run next slide ma so this is from the psychiatry treatment uh, options point of view uh, we have actually got a plenty of treatment options and the suicidal behavior and suicidal thoughts are completely treatable okay so the uh, treatment options include from the basic uh, like uh, counseling supportive counseling and uh, interpersonal psychotherapy or uh, cognitive behavior therapy like uh, depending upon the uh, uh, problem of the uh, person uh, expressing these uh like this thought we can we can go for any any uh, of thing and the other uh, pharmacotherapy i mean the like the medication might uh, include antidepressants for a uh, like few days or like sedatives what we call as benzodiazepines uh, uh once the sleep of the person uh, uh, like uh, becomes normal most of his uh, like psychological trauma can be uh, brought down and like similarly depending upon the psychiatric diagnosis for example schizophrenia we have got a plenty of antipsychotics or for bipolar disorder uh, disorder we have got uh, other uh, mood stabilizers and one more thing uh, i would like to stress upon is about the ecct uh, that is electro convulsive therapy like most of the people have got a stigma about the uh, ecct or what we call it as a shock therapy and most of the patient that we attend they will uh, they would never agree for ect at the like the uh, first go but i would like to make uh, one thing clear about ect ect is a very good option for uh, persons expressing suicidal ideas and uh, uh, four sittings of the ect are required in a uh, like uh, course of this thing and we can see drastic improvement uh, in a uh, matter of uh, one week after the after like completing the ect so if someone comes to you or someone near uh, like uh, comes to you and ask for the professional help or some uh, or something like you your uh, opinion for uh, going about uh, ects you can you can tell them to go ahead with the electroconvulsive therapy safely uh, next slide amma so with this i would like to end my uh, topic speaking on this and the best way to escape from a problem is always to solve it uh, thank you one and all thank you so much sir for your valuable information for giving us such a valuable uh, i would now like to show you more creative works of uh, our skillful students uh, Let me welcome Sayeda Farhana Razvi of PLP Second Year to showcase her poem. Good, good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's Masira. Uh, as uh, Farhana Razvi couldn't join us uh, to read her work, so I'll be reading her poem. Also, she left a message and an introduction for herself. So let me read that for all of you. and she says that hello everyone this is farhana rizvi and i'm second year and i'm from second year psychology student i started composing poems when i started understanding people in certain situations my main concern to take part in this event is to give inspiration to live and to make you all understand that calamities afflictions and difficulties and whatever you call it is just a little phase of life and even nature has to go through it it doesn't mean you stop there you can battle it in one easy step known as hope which is taught by nature my perceptions flow through the ink and i hope it touches your heart have a fun read so let me present to you her poem and the title of the poem is finding hope hope the only rope to life hold it and come up fill your torso with air it's been long you're drowning because of a heavy dive hope the universal conspiracy to regain life nature is full of its rife nature portrays 
it is when a parched land has its own cumulon mibus. A blackout night has it on the new illuminated, even though it's monthly once. A tree has a has on summer shine magic after lending it, lending it all to fall off. A pearl in dark has its own unveiling. But my dear pearl, you are unaware of turbulent waves. Hope is magic and does have logic. Like when the rain droplets hit hard to ground, then the rainbow appears to be found. And when heavy charged solar atoms collides with the Earth's magnetosphere, there you find aurora in the northern hemisphere. Who says the color of hope is green? It's inside you, dwelled in you, running into your veins. Attempt to find it. Don't let everything go in vain. Find it, and I'm sure you'll start dreaming once again. Farhana Razvi. Thank you. That was wonderful, Farhana. Your poem really touched our hearts. Uh, stay seated in your places, because now I would like to call Sophia to speak a few lines about a true event. Respected guests, teachers, and my dear friends, my name is Sophia, and today I would like to share a true incident that happened during my school days. During my school days, we were a group of five friends. One of them was a very happy and a jolly person. Her personality made her the charm of our group, but we didn't knew what this bright smile was hiding until once when her watch accidentally broke, it revealed a deep broad cut on her hand. We didn't knew that just like her watch was hiding her deep scar, her bright personality was hiding deep sorrow. We asked her if she was okay and obviously responded positively. We all knew that she was hiding her problems. From the moment we noticed her cut, we decided to give her special attention. We tried our best to make her comfortable by understanding her. This made her open up to us and we were able to help her. This incident taught us that opening up with close people can help a person beyond imagination. The tears she shed flushed out all the negative energy she had in her. Some may find it difficult to open up, if we really want to help these kind of people, we must keep a check on them. We could see that my friend attempted suicide. If we had not understood her and made her comfortable, we may have lost her by now. Nowadays, especially due to the pandemic, anxiety, stress, depression, and lack of mental peace have increased. These thoughts may lead to suicidal thoughts. Before, these suicidal thoughts change into suicidal attempts. Open up and speak to someone. Speak to someone who trusts you and you think they care. I believe that the strongest soldiers have the most difficult battles. And cowardice is suicide, not, cry not crying and opening up. Cry your heart out because it erases sorrow and gives a positive energy. So let's not be shy and cry in front of our people and share our problems and seek help. Speak up, thank you. That was a heart touching and a very emotional story, Sophia. Thank you for sharing it with us. Now I would want to invite Masira of PLP third year to present a poem. Good afternoon, everyone. This is uh, Masira from PLP third year. Um, uh, I also presented one more poem uh, from my writings, so I would like to present it. And the uh, uh, poem title is A Sunshine Away. I could see that you destroyed everything around. The frustrated heart of mine didn't let me hear my own sound. My trust broken into pieces, just like that mirror on the ground. The trust was ripped. It felt like the throat was gripped. But that was not all. It changed, and I was the cause of it. The night ends, the sunrise. What I see is that it still shines on me. It felt like my soul is sipping the sunshine, like caffeine. I stand enlightened again. I walk away from you. I walk towards the light. With every step I take, the scars appear bright. The scars on me, I flaunt them. 
I now cherish myself like a gem. This time I stay longer. This time I build stronger. Masira, thank you everyone. Masira, I must say that it was a beautiful poem and it had deep meaning. It was wonderful. Now I will invite Samiha of PLP second year to share her poem with us. Um, am I audible? Yes. Okay, hi everyone. My name is Samiha Muhammad and I'm in BA Psychology second year. Um, I decided to contribute in the World Suicide Prevention Day because I thought that this was a very good opportunity to show and understand my talents and what I could actually do with it and how I could convey my message in various different forms through poems and illustrations. I personally know a lot of people who are depressed and they experience constant anxiety uh, regarding their life finance and their future. Uh, I also know a lot of people who talk about suicide and how easy suicide is compared to life. Uh, so I wrote the poem uh, titled Rope and made illustrations uh, in hopes of bringing awareness to how one would feel when one loses a loved one to suicide. Uh, how I would feel if I lost someone to suicide despite trying my level best uh, and how suicide isn't actually an answer to anything. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and read the poem. I knew you were going through a hard time. When asked, you said you were all right. How could I understand what you were going through when the words that always came out of your mouth were, I am fine. The world doesn't come close to what it was now that you're gone. I wish our bond was strong enough for you to live on. I wish you had reached out to me during that time when guilt, confusion, anger was all that you had in mind. Devastated were our hearts, which you left behind, constantly wondering, where did we go wrong? How could we have made it right? A rope was all that you needed to end your life. Your death was all that it took to end mine. Thank you. Wonderful, Samiha. You showed us how it feels like to lose a loved one. It made us all emotional. All these poems and stories might make you want to watch something now. So let us welcome Samia Tahani, who has an amazing video to show us all. Nothing is more miserable and lonely than not having something you want to do. The only thing everyone around me says is to come to my senses. I try to take out my anger, but the only one here with me is me. So what's the point of venting? I'm becoming impatient, on my own. I want to disappear like a mirage, want it to disappear. Just like how Abraham Maslow says, I suppose it is tempting if the only tool you have is a hammer to treat everything as if it were a nail. Would I have changed? If I had chosen a different path, if I had stopped and looked back, what will I get to see? At the end of this road, where you would be standing, everyone else is running, why am I the only one here? I didn't know there would be this many. That there are paths I haven't gone and paths that I can go. I never felt this way before. Maybe I am accepting myself. This is too difficult for me, whether this path is correct. I'm very much confused but I believe and I have hope taken from my mirror. Never leave me again. I believe even though it is unbelievable, to lose your path is the way to find that path. So long. Goodbye to my hope with I promises. Even if I'm alone, I will walk with my own feet because I know this path is mine to take. Even if I go back, I will reach this path eventually. I never, I will never, I will never lose my dream. Now I understand why Carl Rogers says when I look at the world, I'm pessimistic. But when I look at people, I'm optimistic is to get pressured, to grasp a dream, to breathe is sometimes too much to handle. Saying how this person or that person lives like, the world's laughing at me, world doesn't have a right. They never taught us that. In the made up rich paste walls, bright shimmering windows, made up living, sleep talk of tears, waking up from a nightmare. For you now let's try to smile and live as you, me and us. Marathon, life's long so take it slow. It's filled with paradise of dreams, hope, love, care, healing. Real world is different from what's promised, but you need to run. You don't need to step on it. 
If you shoot a flare, you don't need a destination, no sceneries at all. Until your breath comes up to your chin you can stop whenever it's alright, no need to run. No need to run without even knowing the reason. It's alright to not to have a reason. If you have moments where you feel happiness for a while it's alright to stop because you can go without knowing destination hence. Eric Edison inspired by saying, Life doesn't make any sense without interdependence. We need each other and the sooner we learn that, the better for us all. Live. May all of creation be with you till the end of your life. Live. Whenever you are, we'll welcome you. Live. May your trails end in full bloom. Live. Through your beginnings might be humble. May the end be prosperous. I you and us. We have a long way to go but why are we running in place? We scream out of frustration but the empty air echoes. We hope tomorrow will be different from today. We are just wishing. Because the dawn right before the sun rises is the darkest. Even in the far future never forget the you of right now. Wherever you are right now, you are just taking a break. Don't give up, you know. Don't get too far away tomorrow. So stop the foolish race. Stop running for nothing my friend. Smiley all the breaths you. Breath is already in paradise. Let's end with what Sigmund Freud says us. We are what we are because we have been what we have been and what we needed for. Solving the problems of human life and motives is not moral estimates but more knowledge. Samia, that was an amazing video. I loved watching it and so did others. You, did a, you deserve a big round of applause. I would now want to invite Michelle from PLP third year to present a poem. Hello everyone, uh, this is Masira again. Uh, as Michelle couldn't uh, join us in the event uh, uh, to read her work, uh, I would like to read on her behalf. She left us a message. Um, let me read it for you all. This is Michelle, third year PLP. I wanted to be part of this awareness event because I know how it feels to lose a dear one. This poem is to my dear friend who I lost. Don't think of anything. Don't say anything, not even a word. Just give me a smile. I still can't believe it. All of this seems like a dream. Don't try to disappear. Is it true? Is it true? You're so beautiful that I'm scared. Untrue you. Will you stay by my side? Will you promise me if I let go of your hand, you'll fly away and break? I'm scared of that. Will you stop time? If this moment passes, as though it hadn't, it hadn't happened, I'm scared I'll lose you. The small pieces guttered down darkly from my heart, a barren noise. I don't know if this is reality or a dream. My Kafka on the shore. Don't go to those woods over there. My heart is still, still shattering on you. I just wanted to vaporize like this. My love, that is forever. Michelle Seigel, everyone. Thank you. That was very heart touching. Michelle, your dear friend would be smiling at you for dedicating a poem to him or her. Thank you so much for cooperating with us, friends. Uh, now I would invite Amdil to lead you all from here. Thank you. Thank you, Manal. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me. I'm Amdil Aram from BA Psychology, second year. We are here to spread awareness about suicide prevention. World Suicide Prevention Day is observed annually on September 10th to raise awareness regarding the suicide subject and actions that can be taken to prevent these tragedies on a global scale. Mental health awareness is needed now more than ever as India continues to report some of the highest numbers of depression, suicide, and other mental health issues. India has reported some of the highest number of suicides in teens and young adults in the world. Oftentimes, people are battling their own minds for so long that they start saying things. Don't miss their words or thoughts. Be receptive and just listen to what they have to say. Don't let little things slide. Open up grounds for discussion. Make sure that they know you are there for them. The prevention of suicide has not been adequately addressed due to a lack of awareness of suicide as a major, major health problem and the taboo in many societies to openly discuss it. Raising community awareness and breaking down the taboo is important to make progress in preventing suicide. Now, how do we do that? 
To ensure suicides are controlled and subsequently reduced, we need to adhere to the following. We need to reach people who don't seek help and hence don't receive, receive treatment when they are in need of it. We need to develop and implement awareness campaigns with the aim of increasing awareness of suicidal behaviors in the community. We need to target our efforts, not only to reduce risk factors, but also to strengthen protective factor, especially in childhood, adolescence, and the elderly. We need to train healthcare professionals to better understand everyday's ways rings, uh, risk and, pro and protective factors associated with suicidal behaviors. We realize multiple lines of evidence indicating that COVID pandemic has profound psychological, economic, and social effects. These sequels may persist for months and years to come. The last six months of this pandemic are already associated with distress, anxiety, depression, insomnia, acute stress disorder, and imminent post-traumatic disorder, disorders among the general population and healthcare professionals. Social isolation, uncertainty, chronic stress, exhaustion, pain, hopelessness, risk for infection, burnout among frontline workers, pay cut, loss of job, and economic difficulties have led to the development of pre-existing psychiatric disorders and made more, most of us vulnerable. It is imperative to proactively work on decreasing stress, anxiety, loneliness, and aimlessness in general population. So let us all lend our hands together to spread awareness about societal behaviors across the globe. Thank you. I welcome Sir Dr. Katta Melchio, PhD. He's a cognitive trainer and a psychologist with an experience of 20 years, teaching faculty in Vijnana Nilayam Degree College mm -hmm. in Elul. His area of expertise is personality disorder and abnormal psychology. He specialized in marriage, relationships, divorce, stress management professional, REBT, -E Nell School in USA, licensed cognitive trainer. He's also the vice president of national NGO, MAP, is active in social activities and helping government school kids and media people. That's so kind of you, sir. And now I'd like Sir Dr. Karta Melchior to share a few words with us. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir, you are audible. Okay. Uh, I am not able to see the slide. Uh, I am able to see only half of the slide, not full slide. Yeah, it's perfect. Uh, can it just go now? Yeah. I would like to thank the management of St. Anne's uh, College for Women and also Mohana Nandigama. Uh, Mohana Nandigama and uh, myself, we were post scholars for PhD in Gitam uh, University. And I know that all of us are tired at the same time. I'll stick on to my topic. Suicide, a cognitive approach, change and change a life. 
I'd be sticking on to only cognitive approach change. That is to say, if you have some problems, then we have to change and they change and they change to others. And coming to the second slide, what is suicide? Suicide is about escaping unbearable pain. And also it is not that someone wants to die, but someone does not want to live. And third one is when a person feels that he's trapped, he wants to try and end the situation by committing suicide. Suicide is not chosen, but it happens when a person is not able to cope up with the pain. People who are at a higher risk show the following symptoms. Suppose a person commit, committed suicide earlier is prone to go for the second time. And one who feels or experiences depression and also one who has got physical illness, serious physical illness. And one who stops medication for mental health problem. And another person can be one who loses his friend or family member. Then person who is a victim of violence or sexual abuse. And if a person feels that the relationship between he or she is broken up, then one continuously judged or put into shame by other people. And uh, well, the person who has no strong relationship with the family, friends, or community, that is to say, uh, he has no one to share his problems. The third slide, please. Third slide, please. Yeah. There are mainly external factors and internal factors leading to suicide attempt among college students. External factors, parental behavior, academic factors, family distress, interpersonal conflict, love affair, and lifestyle. Coming to parental behavior, scolding or beating. It is not necessarily that a person is scolded by parent, but nowadays we can see, suppose if the boy or girl comes uh, from the college to house very late, if the parent asks why you have come very late, then they feel that it's a scolding. And suppose a person is always with the cell phone. And if we ask why you are always with the cell phone, that also they feel that they're scolding. And uh, there is a communication gap between the parents and the children. And uh, suppose suspicious behavior on the part of the parent. And uh, very often when the girl or the boy comes very late, late night, then uh, parents suspect that something has happened, that's why the child is late. And there can be a gender bias. In the family, all are not equally loved by the parents. Sometimes mother loves maybe the boy, then the girl can feel that she's not taken care. So these aspects uh, experienced by the child by the parents, then it will lead to mental health issue. The second one is academic factors. Suppose if a person fails all the time, then uh, in the college and the environment is not suitable. Maybe that the atmosphere there, suppose uh, someone is sent to OT when he has got asthma problem, this uh, kind of problems, then the girl or the boy feels that out of place. Then behavior of the teacher. Teacher cannot concentrate on all the students equally, cannot love the students equally, cannot communicate to the students equally, or cannot explain to the students equally. So when a person feels that his doubts are not cleared and uh, the teacher is not looking at the particular person, then they may feel that he's neglected. Then peer pressure. In the coming to the family distress, sibling rivalries at home, uh, it is found that always the brother and sister and they have quarrels for no reason, but it is uh, not that they are really rival, rivals, but it happens in the house. 
And the problems at home, maybe financial problems at home, maybe by the father is a drunkard or something like that, beating the children unnecessarily, scolding the mother, all these factors lead to mental health. Interpersonal conflict, argument with the sibling and argument with the parents. No parent likes that the child uh, gives back the answer or gives the explanation. Then the fight starts. Argument with the teacher. When the boy or the girl argues with the teacher, then it will affect the student. Then it can lead to mental health issues and love affair in the love love affair face, then they have at most uh, then lifestyle. People when they are under stress, they can Of course, knowingly and knowingly when the child does some mistakes, in the later stages of depression and suicidal ideation. When a person has to undergo these mental health issues, then it can lead to suicidal attempt. Then the next slide, please. Cognitive or internal factors leading to suicidal thinking and behaviors. There are mainly uh, two aspects, cognitive content deficits and cognitive information processing deficits. Coming to cognitive content deficits, according to Beck's cognitive triad forms, a person has three views, viewing about oneself, viewing about others, and viewing about future. Viewing about oneself. Person can feel that is he or she is defective, inadequate, sick, deprived, and all these can lead to worthlessness and undesirable to live. And coming to the viewing of the others, thinking of others, uh, people can think that others are rejecting, not accepting, not loving, and unsupportive, and so on. Viewing about future. Future seems to be hopeless due to non-belief in the solving the problem. This can lead to decreased problem solving capacity. Then coming to the second one, cognitive information processing deficits. First one is dichotomous thinking. Dichotomous thinking means that a, a, a person has two uh, extreme thoughts. That is good or bad, uh, success or failure. They cannot be thinking in between. Suppose something happens, they say it is good. And when something bad happens, it is bad or worse. Uh, they can never say that uh, it is little better and it is bad. They don't say that. That's why they, they are having the dichotomous thinking. And uh, rigidity, cognitive rigidity. Uh, this inability to see the other options to solve the problem. They are sticking to only one aspect of thinking. The third one, attentional bias. A person selects only information about how to commit suicide. Suppose he's, uh, he or she is undergoing some problems. Attention is only focused on the matters concerned with the uh, committing suicide. Attention fixation. Suicide seems to be the only way they feel that they're not able to solve the problem, so they fix their mind to commit suicide. The fifth one, overgeneralized memory. One who attempts, attempted to commit suicide, 
earlier, if we ask him why you attempted to commit suicide, that person is not able to give a clear explanation what was the real cause and so on. So all these cognitive content deficits and uh, cognitive information processing deficits lead to decreased problem solving capacity. They are not able to solve the problem. That is the feeling they have. And this leads to hopelessness. And uh, secondly, it can lead to psychological or physical pain. And these two can lead to suicide. Uh, next slide, please. The focus of CBT about uh, now, when the person, when a person feels that he's having tension or he's angry or feeling hopelessness or lonely and depression and the feeling of committing suicide, Suppose it can happen to each one of us and then it can happen to others. So the method that we need to follow according to CBT, cognitive behavior therapy, first identify the perceived unsolvable problem. We need to find out what is the real problem. The second step is to reduce the cognitive dis distortions and that is a, a different way of thinking has to be stopped. And second, errors in logic with regards to his or her views of self, others, and future. The third step is improve problem solving skills and increase motivation to solve the problem, reduced perceived emotional pain. As we find that the mindset has to be changed, we need to modify our thought patterns in order to change the life of oneself and the others. Uh, sometimes we are frustrated, but we have to think that it is normal. Sometimes we are anxious or worried about future, but it is normal. And sometimes we are disappointed, but it is normal. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Yeah. Sometimes we feel that we are pushed down and overlooked or poked and ridiculed or humiliated by others, but it happens. So you have to think that it's normal. Sometimes there are situations when we feel that we are lonely, but it is normal. And sometimes we feel depressed, but it's normal. Why I say that all these things are normal? Because all these things happen normally in the life of everyone at one stage or the other stage, at one age or the other age, at one time or the other time. So to go through these emotional problems, uh, it, we have to understand that these things are normal. Next slide, please. Now, if someone wants to slim down or keep the body intact, who or she has to do a lot of fasting, keeping strict diet and rigorous exercise. And this cost a lot of sacrifice and emotional pain, but it would turn to be something which makes person happy later. Now, when there are problems, we need not think that it will last forever. It can be for that moment. It can last for one day, one week, one month, but it can last, cannot last for long. And uh, negative emotions are manifested through tears running down from the eyes. Allow them, and if you don't release the negative emotions or pain through tears, it would become poisonous or toxic. So allow the problems to happen and find the solution by thinking differently. Next slide, please. Now here we see a embroidery design in the first uh, uh, we find a embroidery design on one side and you see it is composed of different colored threads like red, blue, green. 
and uh, other colors and all seem to be entangled, twisted, scrambled, or lifted up, or messed up. All complicated work. When we look at this, we feel that uh, we don't understand. It is messed up. But when, when we look at the other side of the embroidery work, then we see a beautifully systematically designed flower. When you look at the embroidery from your side, it is a mess. But from my side, it is a beautiful pattern and design. To make a beautiful embroidery on one side, you cannot avoid the mess on the other side. It is not only the nature of the embroidery, but also the nature of the life. From the side of the person who attempts, attempts suicide, a situation appears to be messed up so that up to that person, even though it is normal for the others, do modifications to our thought patterns or cognitive aspects because life is a gift given by God through parents and we need to maintain it because every problem and the situation has a solution and anybody can come over it and come out of it in the course of time. So uh, we need to have a different cognitive aspect or different thinking pattern when we face the problems. So it can be applicable to the person, uh, personal persons and the other persons. So thank you, thank you everyone. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate that. A good teacher will appreciate the good qualities of the, her students. If one good quality is allowed to emerge, a world of good qualities will emerge from this one. Our girls have brilliant qualities and talents, which they've already showed you. You've got a more. Without waiting, I'd like to welcome Anam from PLP third year, who's, who's here to present an essay. Hello, this is Masira. Um, I think Anam didn't join us today. So let me speak on her behalf. Uh, she wrote an essay uh, on suicide prevention. And the title of the essay is You Matter. Suicide has undoubtedly become very common in this decade. A lot of youngsters are taking their lives because they do not feel worthy of living a life. They do not feel important enough in this society. If you're thinking of giving up on this life because of whatever you, reason you have, you might be depressed since very long and do not see any light remaining for you. I will not tell you that you might be the light to someone else's darkness, but I can surely tell you that you can become a light of your own world. I'm not asking you to not decide to end your life because your parents love you and will always do or that your loved ones need you and will be there for you whenever you need them. Live because you have to for yourself. Life is like an, like an ocean. It hits you like the waves hit, hits the shore. Here, the waves are the thoughts that make you feel like it's better if you give up. It's how you decide to dodge or move towards those waves of the ocean. You have to decide how you let those thoughts control your life. Talk to someone about your situations. The thing that is making you think about quitting might be big, but it's not going to stay constant in your life. Give yourself some time. The pain will slowly begin to heal and you will get out of it. Remember that this too shall pass. There's people out there. You do not know, ready to help you, listen to you. So please try out and reach out to them. If you do not have anyone you could genuinely talk to, start looking out for yourself in ways no one can. Start small to keep it more realistic, but don't just refuse to make a change for yourself. And I'm not telling to, I'm not telling you that taking your life 
is not brave, but staying in it and not letting it affect you is the new brave. Thank you. This was from Anam, uh, third year PLP. Wow, that was astonishing. You presented amazingly. To be bored to death is a form of suicide. Was this lame? Mm, I don't know. So here's my friend Hafsa from PP second year and she's got us an amazing poem. Better than mine though. Come on Hafsa. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning, everyone. I'm Hafsa Muhammad from Sentence Pursuing Psychology. I'm glad and honored to be a part of this event, wishing to save at least one life. Expecting everyone can hear me. Uh, without consuming time, I'll start my poem. Save me from my inner self because I'm slowly but surely killing myself. I was tired of my life. My failures were barriers to my achievements and happiness. It was hard for me to continue living with disappointments and blunders that approached me every day. I waited for the sun to set, trees to sleep, wind to rest, and the voice of the clock to whisper in my head. The wind stood overpowering the moonlight. The stars still twinkled at me and the tear prickled my skin. I was all alone. When I'm suffocating in my darkness with constant stressful thoughts and with what ifs clutching my tear smudged pillow, I see no one except me in here, engulfed in despair. I keep the pills in my mouth and spit them out. I think to slit my wrist, but will the scars help? What if I take a noose or around my neck or jump over a height? But what's next? Can there be a happily ever after? No, because that's the end. I neglected the reason that made me happy, the people that made me feel worthy, the life that is much better to live in. But was it too easy to forget? I asked myself. I placed my hand over my heart. Can I feel it? The beat? That's what exactly is known as purpose. There is still a purpose that I'm living, that my heart is beating. The sadness, the accidents, the smiles, the, sm uh, the peace, the pain, the love, the loss, the sacrifice, the failure. It's not for nothing. It's not without a purpose. I was born for a purpose. My pain is a part of growing and everything in this life is temporary, the happiness or even the sadness. My story is not over yet. That's not how I end my story. There's a part of, of my heart that fears, fears death, years hereafter, my parents didn't feed me and raise me to die as a failure, achieving nothing good but a stain on their name. The expectation of people doesn't matter. I fail or win. That's what I'm here for, to fall and rise. The burst of sunrise comes after sunset. The darkest night will end. The sun will rise. The wind will blow. The, sun, the stars will guide me over the sea and I'll go on, on the top of the world. I'll relive my life to the fullest, being my own greatest strength. I'll blow my bubbles, free from all the troubles. My failures can never drag me down. Where is my beautiful world? You look at me expecting me to be the, to be the best child. I gave up. I gave up. I just want to be a child now. Thank you. Oh my God. That literally, that literally got tears in my eyes. It was gracious, Afsa. Thank you. Moving to our next presentation, Vaishnavi from PEP second year has been down beautiful essay on suicide let's have a look at it hello everyone good afternoon i am Esa vaishnavi from pep second year i'll start my essay suicide suicide is the act of intentionally ending life this can be done in many different ways such as drowning pills injection electrocution jumping from height such as a building hanging and many other ways every 40 seconds a person dies by suicide somewhere on the globe Depression. Depression is a very serious medical illness. Depression can be a trigger to commit suicide. Nowadays, what I see is this in generation, teenagers are hanging themselves due to depression. They are also self-harming to blackmail their partner, that is for love relationship. Suicide feelings are most if an individual feels that they cannot carry on or cannot see a reason to keep living. A person may despise themselves or feel that they are unwanted or useless and not needed by anyone in life. The person may feel shame, anger, and guilt. To prevent this, WSPD has a variety of different activities to connect with, with people, communicate and care for World Suicide Prevention Day. This is an awareness day that is re rec recognized on 10th of September every year. To, to help and put a stop to suicide with various activities around the globe. 
place your hand over your heart can you feel it that is called purpose so don't give up so the risk factors for suicide are generally characteristics that make it more likely that an individual can consider attempt of suicide importantly certain events and circumstances may increase risk and they are previous suicide attempts a history of suicide in the family substance misuse mood disorders access to lethal means losses and other events for example the breakup of a relationship or a death economic failure legal difficulties financial difficulties bullying and history of trauma or abuse chronic physical illness including chronic pain exposure to the suicidal behavior of others now productive factors for suicide are contacts with providers for example follow up phone call from the healthcare professional next effective mental health care easy access to variety of clinical in- interventions strong connections to individuals family community and social institutions and this is very important problem solving and conflict resolution skill i want to conclude by giving five tips from cdc what you can do if you are concerned about your friend or loved one ask someone if he or she are worried about anything keep them safe be there with them help them connect stay connected it's okay to not be okay not everyone are perfect you have come this far so don't give up thank you thank you vaishnavi and now sushma is going to amaze her uh, amaze us with her beautiful drawings Good morning everyone my name is Sushma from BA Psychology I am very pleased to be here today I am going to talk about still life hope through my drawings the first one is nature being in nature or even viewing scenes in nature that gives us anger fear and stress and increases pleasant feelings exposure to nature not only makes you feel better emotionally it contributes to your physically well being reducing blood pressure and heart rate too Through the drawing, I want to express this. Even when no one understands you and you lose hope, there is still nature, which will makes you happy and gives you a new hope. Second one is sea. Blue seascapes are calming. Being near the ocean has mental health benefits as well as physical ones. Staring out the ocean can only results in relaxing, meditative state, and even changing the frequently brain waves to match that of the sea, putting you really in touch with the nature. The third one is sky. Somehow the sky fills us with amusement and wonderment. Staring at the sky gives you to asking questions and bottling your curiosity. Yes, I love looking at the sky because it gives me a sense of freedom. I want to express that looking at the sky full of one is travel. The stress of work and daily demands can distract us from what we find to be actually meaningful and interesting, says Dr. Tamara Greenberg. Traveling gives you the opportunity to step away from daily grind, the new events and experience help reverse your brain, hence boosting your mood and self confidence. The fifth one is education. Education gives you wings to fly, quoted by Dr. A. P. J. Abdul Kalam. The best gift you can give yourself is education. It gives courage and confidence, which to walk strongly in your own down the super highway of life. the sixth and the final one festival of lights the festival of lights brings you wave bright sparkles of peace and happiness the story i'm going to say is based on true incident a girl was so fed up with her life being told she was unworthy and and all of all the tensions in life she decided to take her life she w- she walked towards the bridge but there was two boys started if teasing her taking a step back she was so annoyed with them and went back home Back when she went home she saw her home was filled with lights and firecrackers all all over the sky and her mother gifted her a favorite dress then she realizes she should she should not die and leave 
the festival of lights gave her a hope and she decided to not take any step further to die in her life thank you everyone and thank you department of psychology for giving Thank you, Sushma. You're really talented. And now, my friends Tulsi and Kavya will be playing the video, which contains a really good message. Hey, hi. How are you doing? Hi. I'm fine. Yeah, it's been a long time, right, since we spoke. Mm, I guess. Mm, so actually I was working on this uh, English project and I had a doubt. So thought of contacting you if you know anything. Mm, um, I'm not aware. Um, okay. So you're not attending classes, are you? No. Uh okay. Uh, I'll ask someone else and I'll get Are you? No. And I noticed you deleted all the posts in your social media. What happened? Mm, yeah. Mm, is everything all right with you and with your family? I guess so. Mm, okay. And yeah, I, I just remembered the story you posted a week ago. Uh, on the Instagram, oh my God, it's so deep, you know. I can totally re relate to you. And the pandemic, it <laughs> it really affected all of us, right? Yes, that is so true. Yeah, and uh, and how we are coping with all the stress? Um, I don't know. You see, <laughs> what about you? Mm, well. For me, I join cooking classes and my God, it's my coping therapy right now, you know? I'm mm -hmm. baking yummy cakes and I'm just loving it. And what about you? Wow, that is really great, man. You, you, you're you baking now. Yeah, I learned baking and, you know, like every weekend there is some or the other desert my home and I'm just loving it. That's amazing. Yeah. I, I wish to join one such my mind from all of this you see because yeah a lot of stress going on in my mind mm -hmm. yeah Thank you, girls. This was deep. Though. You know, you should, we should really approach the ones who need us. Yeah. And uh, now, I'd like our HOD of Psychology, Mohana Ma'am, to say a few words about Dr. Srikan Bandri, sir. Good afternoon, girls. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, 
Yes, good afternoon, everyone, of course. And our speaker of the day, Dr. Srikant, and Ms. Alina, Dr. Melk Yor, and all the participants. It's such an honor for me to get this opportunity. Thank you all and dignitaries. On behalf of Department of Psychology, St. Anne's College for Women, I extend a warm welcome to the people gathering here. I would like to express my gratitude to all of you, esteemed delegates of the webinar, uh, their pre presence and contribution to make this webinar a great success. Uh, I extend my gratitude to our honorable sister principal, Dr. Sister Amruta, for her constant support and help and inspiring us, encouraging us with the warm words for the successful event. event. Also, I must thank the, thank the organizing team, volunteer, and all the volunteers, Simreen, um, Vaishnavi, Manal, Amtul, and other girls who are doing amazing work. Thank you, girls, for helping us to make this webinar a successful. And talking about um, the topic, our, the most important topic, uh, suicide or death by suicide and dying due to suicide. Obviously, it's a very sensitive issue and uh, it can be triggering to a lot of people and especially for those who are suffering or battling depression, battling bipolar disorder. And I'm really very thankful uh, to our delegates uh, for explaining us and giving a very brief insight about this topic. Thank you all. Yes, thank you, girls. Yes, thank you, uh, Zainab. Yes, yes. Now, I'd like Mohanam ma'am to say a few words. Yeah. Actually, thank you, Alina, and uh, thank you, Melchior, and uh, thank you, Dr. Srikant. Okay, it's a great privilege the way uh, Alina started explaining about the Jungian psychology, Jungian psychology, and she started explaining about ego, self, and uh, the way she explained even about the Bhagavad Gita when she's from Russia also, and the way she uh, get into the European myth and God of exam, roots from everything, the psychologist treasure to sacrifice and hypnosis and thanatos, and the way she built a relation between death and a dream and a fantasizing world, the young world, like the young words from fantasies about the suicide. And uh, she built a very good relation between the, like, uh, the way she explained about the metaphors in the uh, suicidal, and the spiritual dimension of a suicide. She uh, clearly explained that the way she analyzed everything is really good. And uh, um, yeah, her clinical case, it's seriously giving a nice example. The way people will think, the way people will react, the way people will have impulsive behavior. Okay, at this world, like uh, uh, people will get into sleep, but they fantasize something. They uh, see, people will go for sleep only to relaxation. But sometimes what will happen, they will get into the nightmares and sometimes the ego clashes will be there, uh, even if with themselves. But she explained very nicely and ego and the sleep and traumatic experiences also. And the way people will behave. I seriously liked her presentation and it's really good insight to the students and the department also. Thank you so much. And Dr. Srikant, he explained very nicely about the parasite and suicidal model and uh, now, the parasocial attempts how people will do and the way depression will lead to the suicide. He explained very well and how to recognize and the way we need to get into the medical world to go for the uh, technical things. Uh, it's really nice. Yeah, we'll come back to the Dr. Melchior thing. See, he explained very nicely about the cognitive behavior therapy and the change and change of life and the internal factors loading the suicide thinking and the distortion mode, the distortion thinking he explained very nicely. And the way we should go with the success and failure, the way thoughts will affect on the people. 
he explained nicely and identifying and perceiving problems also and the way negative emotions will affect the person uh, yeah it really went good thank you one and all see you can say uh, say a few words like dr elena dr sikant dr melky thank you uh thank you mahana and uh, thank you all for nice uh, presentations and reports and it was a big pleasure for me to be a guest of this inspiring event and um, I consider that investments in prevention of suicides are very important and all of you uh, do really a great work. And um, because of you all, the world, uh, of course, uh, will be better. And I think uh, this role, now we are, uh, this um, big work we are doing together uh, plays um, a really a great role in uh, um, uh, establishing uh, public health in uh, prevention suicides. Uh, and um, uh, so um, uh, all of us, uh, of course, uh, influence um, uh, the connection of our of our um, ego uh, or, and um, our self. Okay, and uh, thank you all again. Yeah, thank, thank you, you ma'am. Ladies and gentlemen. Your presence made this day a memorable one. Thank you for listening, for inspiration, for encouragement, for being here, and most importantly, for giving you time and presence. Today, we had an opportunity to hear your thoughts, and this will surely be going to encourage us in our future events. Thank you, Dr. Srikant, sir, Van Shivoka, ma'am, and Dr. Katta Melchio, sir, for your presence and time. I'd also extend my thanks to our lecturers, friends, and the audience for your support. Thank you, Tulsi, Manal, Simreen, Masida, and Vaha, and all the participants for your support, encouragement, and hard work. Even the darkest night will end and the sun will rise. I'll invite Zainab Ma'am, the Assistant Professor of the Psychology Department, to conclude the event. And also, the feedback form link is given in the chat box. Kindly fill it. You'll be receiving certificates for that. Thank you. Hello. I'm the lucky. I think you can um, you can say it. you can end up the session. I think Janab is not available. Yeah, thank you everyone. I am concluding the session. Thank you so much for your involvement. Actually students and everyone. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, thank you, Elena, for your time. I think uh, we've uh, we taken some more 30 minutes time extra from you all. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm concluding the event. Thank you, Elena, for you. Thank you, Dr. Srikant, sir, and uh, Kata Melkyo. Yeah, one of my best friends. <laughs> You can say anything, any words about that, like if you are interested. Yeah. yeah. Can... Anyone having any doubts can put them in the chat box.
Yeah, one by one we can say thanks and we can leave, I think. Thank you everyone for this beautiful session. Thank you guest speakers and thank you ma'am for hosting this uh, wonderful event. And uh, thank you all those who have participated actively. This is really a very um, good event. At the end, we have, uh, we have worked out so well. It worked so well. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Whoever wants to say thanks, we can. We can leave one by one. Yeah, so thank you. Uh, <laughs> it was nice to, to see you all. And so goodbye. Yeah. Yeah, Elena. Thank you. Bye bye. Uh, may I wind up the session? Do you want to wind up, Omtil? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. I think wall warriors can come on screen. We can take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tulasi. Waha. Hi, Tulasi. Hi. Hi. Simrin. Bushra. Hi. Yeah. Everybody, you can sit on your video. We can take a picture. We can conclude. It's all your effort and hard work. <laughs> <laughs> off screen yes ma'am yeah after taking the picture we'll end up the call so that uh, recording yeah Manal okay. and uh, Amtul you both uh, did a great job you know in uh, hosting the event yeah. it was so fun it was thank so you, fun you. you know yes Amtul thank you much. Thank, thank you and Vaha thank you so much for the uh, is she there yes yes and Vaha, thank you so yeah, much for yeah. being so spontaneous, you know, and uh, helping us in no organizing problem. the event. <laughs> and it was such no a problem. great team, ma'am, you know, everyone was so dedicated. The yeah. host were uh, awake till 3 o'clock, till 2.30, uh, <laughs> writing the script and uh, deciding everything, you know. It was yes, such yes. a sweet yeah. gesture yes. towards the event. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, together everybody achieves more. So, that's what team is for. Yes, yes. It was, it was super fun and uh, a learning experience, ma'am, to be a part of this event. Looking forward for more, to participate yeah. in a few more events. Yes, yes. Uh, yes, yes, is, yes. Is anyone taking the screenshot uh, or a picture? I took one, but yeah, somebody can take. I'll post it in our group. Everyone this is one. looking so beautiful, you know. <laughs> oh. So as you know, uh, uh, in this messy bun, huh? <laughs> yeah, you look good. <laughs> Shall we post something? <laughs> Uh, thank Where's you, Mona, Yeah, yeah, ma it's thank a great so event. Much. It's a great event. All event. the participants, you can uh, switch on the camera. Yeah, once. please, you can switch we'll on your camera. Photo. Yes, yes. Everyone was so dedicated, you know. A few girls who were not uh, interested in attending the event, even they did in the last moment. And few even uh, posted their work yesterday night as they were very interested, you know. Yeah, yes, yes. Even Vaishi also, she joined even in yeah, the yeah. In her wedding also. Yeah, she it's had a good. wedding. Yeah. Even then, uh, she attended the event. And dedication, ma'am. Dedication. So Actually, and Kavya, the video was fabulous. <laughs> it was the last yeah, minute uh, video, amazing. you know. Uh, we did that uh, last night, actually. It's really good. Wow. It's really good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we wanted a conclusion video and uh, we both 
decided to do it <laughs> in the last good. night yeah thank you shall we leave yes yeah. we can leave shall we all uh, uh, fill the feedback form as well so that we'll get our certificate <laughs> yeah i already did <laughs> uh because you must see the certificate as well it is so beautiful you know even there is so much of hard work into it like into the google form uh, and into the certificate they are so beautiful yeah. you must fill the form and get the certificate everyone yeah, yeah they are so beautiful you know uh, sneha uh, is sneha here in the meeting i'll thank her as well because she was so dedicated you know she was asking me every single thing is it okay shall i make changes it was so cooperative even with the certificate changes actually everyone they contributed very well everybody everybody even in the last moment up to three o'clock yeah seriously superb you put in your heart and i was like amazing it was amazing <laughs> thank you for the support with your without your support i can't make this event even uh, elena also texted me a lot actually she was there end of the session thank you ma'am for this opportunity thank you yeah yeah everyone uh, did an amazing job yes thank yes. you uh, let's fill the feedback form and we'll leave okay okay chalo okay. ma'am even you fill the feedback form ma'am seriously i'll fill the form yeah, uh, because you I'll must uh, see the certificate yes sir <laughs> I'll fill the form. <laughs> yeah, sure, ma'am. Chalo then. Bye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Sreeka and Anusha, Sunayana, Annie. Yeah, everyone. Manal. I'm still. Ah, uh, Manal, can you Tulsi. send the link once again? Ah, uh, yes. Send the link in our group, or else. So someone is asking. Yes, ma'am. It's there. It's in our group. Okay. Okay, Penny, is there? I don't. Oh, yeah. Oh uh, no, no, so, uh, ma'am. Uh, I think Sureka ready. I think she is an outsider, and she is asking for the link. Oh, okay, okay, fine. Yeah, um, please share here. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Okay, then. Okay, bye. guys. Bye. Bye, bye.